we're going over to one of Rikke's uh, pure classic uh, Royal City. I love that crown. I think it's so cool. It's really, well, really beautiful. It's and, actually uh, Scandinavian things too. Actually, there's a yeah. goblet, the, uh, the crown jewels of Denmark. There is a uh, silver goblet that has an ivory, um, an ivory uh, skeleton with emerald eyes. And so I lifted that from that, from the royal jewels, because I, I thought it was such an amazing vessel. And I put that into my crown of, uh, yeah, put it into my crown. <laughs> so that happens. <laughs> That's beautiful. This is, uh, it's not available in Sweden at the moment, um, I think. Uh, I got one, of course. Uh, <laughs> which we're going to taste now. So this is a little bit of a bonus wine oh, wow. uh, that, that we have here today. Uh, some people might have a, an older um, vintage or so, but this is 2016. It's from the Stone Ridge Vineyard, right? Yeah. On the Royal Slope. Yep. Uh, would you tell us some something about the winemaking, what, what makes this wine so exceptional and, and a completely okay. different price range uh, from, from all the others? Well, sometimes it's just magic, you know, it's just like you, you think of some really good winemakers, let's say in Burgundy, okay? Um, you know, they have wines from the village, they have the village wine, they have, you know, they have the regular Gervais Chambertin, then they make then the village wine, then they have, so you vineyard plot Gervais Chambertin, and then they have Chambertin. Well, the thing is, it's the same about here. I mean, it has nothing to do with the talent of the winemaker. It has to do with the, the, the aspect of the place in the, in the world and the earth. And this is something that the earth can only give you. Um, and so this vineyard in particular, and this, this block where the Syrah is, tastes like unlike anything else that I, I, I make. And not because of my winemaking, I'm a reasonably good winemaker. But the thing about it is here is this is an exceptionally special place in the world that can only produce this one wine. Mm. Um, you know, you know, for the winemaking is not particularly different from what I do. I think it's special because above the vineyard because it faces south on the uh, north of the vineyard um, not more than like a hundred meters away there's an apple orchard and it's on a big slope and when the end of the vineyard is it's on a uh, there's a little rise to it so what i think is through all the watering what happens is i think it reaches all the organic materials down to the vineyard where the syrah is and there's this incredible potpourri of organic materials in the soils that you would not find because they all flush down from this whole slope into just where this vineyard is. There's Syrah that is just slightly north and a little west. I'm talking about, you know, 10 meters north and 100 meters west, even got the same soils, but because it's not in that place down the bottom, it doesn't taste like this. Hmm. So this is super interesting. Yeah. Smell, as you know, I mean, you know, as being people who like wine and get, get the opportunity to drink a lot of wine, there's no other Syrah that smells like, like this in the world. No. Because, you know, I, I have some, you know, evil genius. Maybe I am an evil genius, but I'm not an evil genius, or it could be. Ah. But the thing is, what's really great about this is it's the place. I love evil geniuses. Yes. I mean, truly. And, 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 yeah. and then in the time you pour it in the glass, it's changed completely, hasn't it? Yeah. I mean, yeah, we opened it a few hours ago as well, and it cha it changed tremendously. It just opens up. So blackberries, black currants, uh, chocolate. It's meaty. It has a lot of minerals. It's blood and heavy metal, I would say, you know. Yeah. I think, uh, well, I guess we could take a, you know, the band Satyricon, they're from Sweden. I mean, this is black crows on tombstone. <laughs> they're Norwegian, actually. They're actually Norwegian? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, there's a shout out to the Norwegian. So, uh, Satyricon. And yeah. uh, so, what, why, what does this remind me of? Black crows on a tombstone. Yeah, that's that's true. Uh, we, can, we can only hope that Sigurd is watching, actually. Awesome. <laughs> he, might, he might do. Um, I had a, a beautiful fillet of elk yesterday. Uh, a moose beef, and I think this would uh, would go beautiful to it. It's, it's game and uh, quite harsh, but it has all this wild uh, taste to it. Um, iron, um, yeah, 
beautiful, beautiful co- connection. What, what, what would you pair it to if you, if you could, I mean, pick anything or would you drink it solitary? Because I think it's such a solitary wine as well. I think it, it goes two ways. I think it was what you're talking about. I think some wild game is a super way to go uh, with this. So, you know, whether it be elk or venison or something of that nature, um, I think it'd be amazing also with like roasted lamb. You know, lamb and raw goes so well together. But I could also see like uh, just letting, you know, it take uh, the center stage and maybe just having a little piece of cheese with it and a little nice. piece of and just it make it all about the wine. But yeah. um, I was going to make it about the both. I think what you had last night would be absolutely perfect with that. And I think, you know, this is a wine that, you know, I mean, we're coming into winter. I mean, and, uh, you know, there in, in Scandinavia, I mean, this is a beautiful wine for when it's super cold outside and it's dark. It has such warmth, you know, yeah. uh, with a candle on the table and friends around. It's, it's one of these uh, kind of wines that kind of brings us uh, our hearts all together. 